Very nice, nice people, Jean Marsh, and uh, they've both done awfully well, haven't they? Uh, mm -hmm. Since uh, I mean, Jean Marsh has um, appeared well, a wonderful series was upstairs, downstairs, and um, and Peter Purvis has made a name for himself as a as a presenter, and uh, and I think he's got his own company now. I, I think I've read somewhere. I don't know. Um, no, 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 they were, they were, it was obvious they'd both get on well because they were such nice people and indeed very good at their parts. Because those parts when you're the juvenile, they aren't always good parts. Sure, you're there for the action and that's important, but uh, you're not really participating all. Well, you are, yes, you are participating in the action, but you, um, uh, it's really, it's really, the conflict between the doctor and and the villain, so that um, mm. Mm. your your character in Dalek Master Plan uh, was called Mavic Chen, and it had the grand title of being Guardian of the Solar System. That's right. I mean, was this? Uh, it was quite a, a big part you had as well in in the Master Plan. But the, the, there weren't many lines, you know. It, it was it was it was. It was uh, um, because I was the villain and and alone, there was no, I didn't really have any lieutenants that were sort of near me, as it were. Uh, I was nearly always in single shot. Well, that gives you a prominence for a start, you know. It's a, that's the grammar of the, of of of, of uh, directing. I mean, um, um, Dougie did that. Dougie, Dougie shot it in such a way that because. It, to the best of my memory, I'm sure I'm right in saying, you can be awfully clear that because the part had a significance, um, it was a very, very good part, but it, uh, there was nothing much to say in it. You know that might mean nothing. You realize the Daleks might just assemble a force and conquer us? Now, there'd be nothing we could do. We still have the power. Where? They're expecting me now to arrive at the Terranium. Calm down. Mara is not far from Kemble, is it? Nearer Kemble than Earth is. But what help is that? Tell the Daleks that you trapped the fugitive in the cellular projector and sent them to Mara on purpose. You're mad. Am I? It was a safety measure. Unwelcome attention was being paid to the fugitive. So you sent them to Myra on purpose. Ah. We could attribute it to a too efficient security system. It would show conclusively that we're completely allied to the Daleks. They would trust us for more. Your part as a uh, Mavic Chen, you were made to look quite oriental. I think your face was darkened slightly. Yeah. And you, can you remember anything about the makeup sessions? No, I remember. I think it were, uh, we discussed this earlier when you told me it was Sonia Sonia Markham who did it. She was the um, uh, she was the makeup supervisor in charge of Doctor. Who. A lot of the makeups on Doctor Who were wonderful makeups. I mean, and mine was a very good one. Oh, she she did a beautiful job for me. But even some people with quite small parts did have um, wonderful makeups. They spent a lot of money and and, and, and did the, uh, to uh, get because that 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 program didn't have much money allocated to it. But it, uh, quite a proportion went on makeup. Um, uh, and Sonia uh, gave me a, a very, very nice uh, um, uh, makeup. I mean, she, I know, I remember my nails, for instance. I was given um, uh, very long nails. And I used to do something like this. I can't, I can't really remember what I did. Um, I don't quite know whether that was Dougie Camfield, whether I put in a suggestion or not, or whether that was uh, Sonia Markham. I really, really don't know. But anyway, out of the three of us, <laughs> we got something that attracted attention, if nothing else. My makeup took a long time. I think, I think what took time, if I remember correctly, was getting my eyes. I think they put, um, it's called something skin. 
uh, around your eyes. Uh, you, and obviously they've got to be careful how they do that. Mm -hmm. And then this draws, it, it draws the skin back. That gave, gave one the oriental um, look. Um, tell us again about this 1965 award you got for being Villain of the Year. Well, um, uh, but I didn't get any award. I was just the, I was just, I think, um, uh, uh, it appeared in the uh, Daily Telegraph that I was the day, I was the, well, the villain of the year, it was the Daily Telegraph's opinion of who was the villain of the year. Probably if the Guardian or the Telegraph or the Times were, uh, were indulging in that sort of uh, journalese, uh, they would have picked somebody completely different, so I don't, I, I don't know. There, there wasn't actually any award, it was just uh, it was just something that was uh, said. For all I know, the, the journalist may have put it down in fun. I can't remember. <laughs> so have you, have you got any memories of uh, working with Nicholas Courtney on Master Plan? You probably won't Well, I know Nicholas very well. I mean, I can't remember now. Funny enough, I haven't seen all that. I haven't seen hardly anything of him since. And that's 35 years ago. But up to then, we seemed to know each other very well. Maybe it's because we knew each other very well, because um, whereas most people, you know, it's a turnover every week. Most people just came in for the week, whereas Nicholas was in it every, in every episode, just as Bill Hartnell and uh, Jean Marsh and Peter Purvis. Uh, so um, uh, those people you get to know, obviously, very well. Um, and I, 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 uh, I knew Nicholas very well. I think I also knew, I think, Nicholas's sister was a girl named Susan Courtney, I think. And she was at the same drama school that I was at. Um, uh, that would be immediately after the war, or immediately after I came out. Uh, about um, about 1940, about 1947-48. Morning, Sir Gerald. Good morning. I'm Gifford, security. Uh -huh. Can I see your pass, sir? Oh, yes. Sorry, but I have to check everyone. There you are. It's all right. Yes, thank you. The testing area is two miles further on. I'll escort you to the gate, sir. All right, fine. When I read the Doctor Who script, I thought, ah, I, th I thought, Tobias Vaughan on the page was a much better part than Mavic Chen. Mm. In point of fact, looking back on Mavic Chen, Mavic Chen was a very good part because of, of his positioning, his geography in the, in the, in the, in the, in the play. But uh, for words, and for some one or two very nice lines, um, uh, Tobias Vaughan was a very good villain's part. It was because uh, he, he had everything. He had a lot of charm, and he he had uh, fun, and and he really was now so swine. <laughs> I mean, there was uh, when it came to it, it was, it was utterly ruthless. You and your friend, the doctor, have caused me some considerable trouble today. First, he breaks into this building, and then you ruin a very expensive device. Only because the stupid thing wouldn't tell us what we wanted to know. Ah, yes, Miss Watkins. You're concerned about your uncle, aren't you? I'd like to know where he is, yes. He's perfectly well, I assure you. Although a little, uh, uncooperative at the moment. Your visit here is most opportune. I think you can be very useful to me. Me? But, but how? Your uncle needs to be persuaded to continue his work for me. <laughs> but I can't do anything about that. No, but I can now. Becca, I'd like you to take care of these two young ladies, please. Take them. No, how do you think I'm not 100% certain whether or not I had worked with Patrick Troughton. Um, I'm not certain before 
the uh, what, what the, mm. the device warned the, mm. the, I'm sure I hadn't, mm. but okay. I, I, but I did know him so well from uh, with, without being friends exactly. We were just sort of acquaintances who had run into each other often, pro probably probably be both back to a glass of beer after the show or something like that. You still think you have a chance? Yes, if you'll help us. Help you? Why should I? But to save us, to save yourself. And if I survive, what future have I, Doctor? What will the world do with me? Oh, for heaven's sake, stop thinking about yourself. Think of the millions of people on Earth who are about to die. Appealing to my better nature. No. If I help you, it'll be because I hate them. The Cybermen, my allies. You think I'm mad, that all I want is power for its own sake. No, I have to have power. The world is weak, vulnerable, a mess of uncoordinated and impossible ideals. It needs a strong man, a single mind, a leader. Vaughn, will you listen? Right. I'll help you to destroy them because I hate them. They destroy my dream. Doctor? Uh, yes, Brigadier. We have a chopper in the area. Can you get up to the roof? Yes, yes, we'll wait there for you. We'll go out. Your unit friends are very efficient. I'll leave the way to the roof. No, 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 I'll take that. The Spider-Man will be guarding the radio transmitter. The budget for filming is very little, and the director has to make snap decisions. And I was always surprised, not just at the scenes I was in, but at all Dougie's filming, how when he had these very restricted conditions, very little time, and I mean, if I think that um, they had no, uh, what's the word? Um, if anything went wrong, like, suppose there was a downpour of rain, they couldn't shoot or something like that. Uh, th there was no facility, no arrangement for them to come back another day to make that, it, because everything had to be done on time. And I think then they just have to uh, find something else instead of that little clip of film they were putting in. They'd have to find some way around it mm -hmm. and rehearse it and do it in the studio. Mm -hmm. That's the best of my memory. But the, 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 one of the extraordinary things about Dougie was that even within those with the, the, that sort of the gun at his head the whole time, he was able to produce such very, very good filming. He had no authorization from me. Then I'd like to know who sent him. Dr. Quist, I imagine. The Nobel man. He had the special investigation department. He is somewhat unorthodox. Well, of course. If you agree with his methods, Minister. I didn't make the appointment. But you're still responsible for him. You may remember the somewhat exaggerated uh, publicity when he was appointed. Yes. It's not easy to replace a man of such eminence without a concrete reason. Well, I'd like to send one of my people over to collect the culture sample. No. You must please leave that to me. I really can't, Minister. You know Variant 14. If it should get out, it might well jeopardize the Dungeness test and our whole program. I can assure you that I shall let nothing, absolutely nothing, interfere with that. <laughs> 